Bombshell news from New Zealand, the fall of the poster child of the international left, loved overseas but now on the nose at home and behind on the polls. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern decides to quit rather than fight the next election in 10 months' time. This summer I had hoped to find a way to prepare not just for another year but another term because that is what this year requires. I have not been able to do that. And so today I'm announcing that I will not be seeking re-election and that my term as Prime Minister will conclude no later than the 7th of February. I know what this job takes and I know that I no longer have enough in the tank now, Dern also said something today that showed why she was admired by the woke, the kind of people more interested in seeming than doing. How would you like me to do this to remove As someone who always tried to be kind. Now, that's lovely, uh, but it's the kind of emoting that made leftists around the world, especially Australia, treat her as a hero, almost a saint. Here's our treasurer, Jim Chalmers, today. Uh, we are talking about an incredible source of strength at home in New Zealand and a source of remarkable inspiration around the world. It is something conservatives know very well. It's one thing to seem good. It is a very different thing to actually do it. And that is why Ardern was leading her Labor government to defeat, according to recent polls. Yes, Ardern could wear Islamic head coverings and show great empathy and genuine compassion after the terrible massacres of Muslims in Christchurch by a far-right extremist. And I think that's probably the image that many people overseas will have of her. But wanting to seem good made Ardern do things that were bad and have made her Labour Party less popular now than the National Party and its ally, the Libertarian Act Party. For instance... Ardern wanted to seem kind to the 17% of New Zealanders who identify as Maori. What she's done is racist and undemocratic. Introducing legislation, for instance, giving the Maori 17% minority an equal say with a much larger non-Maori New Zealand population over the country's water resources. She also created a new Maori health authority, the first step to a divided health system, divided by race. Now, obviously, that division, not surprisingly, is turning out to be unpopular. And I hope that's a warning to the Albanese government that's also pushing for racial division. Ardern also wanted to seem kind by spending more, a lot more. But inflation now is at a 32-year high and she couldn't manage what she spent either. Her Kiwi Build scheme, just one example, a scheme to build 100,000 homes by 2028, so far managed less than 1,500. Ardern also wanted to seem kind by cracking down on so-called hate speech. She seemed to tell the United Nations that she wanted more censorship, particularly of the internet. This will also be important in understanding more about mis- and disinformation online, a challenge that we must, as leaders, address. And Ardern's government has effectively stifled debate. For instance, she set up a public interest journalism fund to give media companies $55 million, a lot of it channeled to programs backing Ardern's race agenda. No wonder so many outlets are so tame. Her government even shopped around for far-fetched excuses to ban an anti-lockdown Australian journalist from visiting New Zealand just because it didn't agree with his opinions. So it turns out that being kind can mean being a bully. And of course, Ardern wanted to seem kind by pretending to save the planet from global warming. But she's just spread baseless fear by declaring a climate emergency with bizarre predictions of climate doom. It's the increased risk to human health and livelihood, civil unrest, mass drought, mass disease, loss of lands and homes, increased fires, increased tropical storms, mass human displacement and globally exhausted resources. I then followed up this hysterical scaremongering, the planet will end, Armageddon. She followed it up last year by announcing a tax on cows and sheep because they're 
burps and farts allegedly cause dangerous global warming. But it was just another useless gesture because New Zealand, of course, is so small that it can't make any difference at all to the climate. And farmers were naturally furious and they held mass protests and support for Labor kept falling. And if you wonder why Ardern is more popular overseas than she's at home, it's simple. Foreigners see Ardern seeming nice. They see the gesture. But New Zealanders, they pay the price. And there are other factors too behind the fall of Ardern's popularity despite all that media barracking prolonged COVID lockdowns, rising crime, etc., etc. Now, it's true that Adern also did do uh, good things, and I'm sure she always meant well. She certainly had that charm that we saw again at a press conference today when she called out to a partner in the audience. And to Clark, let's finally get married. But be clear, Adern's resignation marks a failure of woke politics. Now, whether it'll be reported that way, way is irrelevant. As we now see, however things are made to seem, though, the reality will come out.